Um, here we've got a function machine, or a number machine. It says input, then says add nine, multiply by two, and then you get your output. So part A, the input is three, what is the output? So to get the output, we're gonna first of all add nine. So three plus nine is equal to 12. And then we're gonna multiply by two. So 12 multiplied by two is equal to 24. So if the input is three, the output is 24. Okay, part B. The output this time is 30, work out the input. So whenever you've got the output and you need to get the input, you're gonna work from right to left and you're gonna do the inverse operations. So instead of multiplying by two, we're gonna divide by two. So we're gonna take our 30, and we're gonna divide it by two. And 30 divided by two is 15. Then instead of add nine, we're gonna subtract nine. So we're gonna do 15 subtract nine, and 15 subtract nine is six. So we've got our input of six. So if the output is 30, the input is six. And let's, we, let's just test it. If we get our six and add nine, we get 15. And if we times by two, we get 30. Okay, let's have a look at our second example. So our second example this time says, input divided by four, and then blank, and then output. And it says, when the input is 20, the output is 12. And it says, complete the number machine. Um, so first of all, we're going to start with our 20 and we're going to divide it by 4. And 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5. So what we know is that whenever we, get, uh, whenever we do our first step of the function machine, we get 5. Then we're going to do something and then we get 12. Now there's lots of different options here. Um, we, you, know, you could think, what would you multiply 5 by to get the 12? Uh, you could think, what do you divide 5 by to get the 12? Because you could divide it by a null point number, you know, make it larger. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple. To get from 5 to 12, I'm just going to write add 7. Because that's the easiest way, I think, to get from 5 to 12 in a function machine like this. Um, and that's it. Okay, next example. Okay, so this time it says the input, and then it says multiply by 3, and then subtract 8, and then we get our output. And it says work out the output when the input is 7. So we've got 7. And we're going to multiply it by 3. So 7 times 3 is equal to 21. And then it says subtract 8. So 21 subtract 8 is equal to 13. So if the input is 7, the output is 13. Next, work out the input when the output is 22. Now it's very, uh, it's very important in these questions you notice the words the output is 22. So we know the answer this time is 22. We need to go back and see what the input was. So remember we're doing the opposite, so instead of or inverse, so instead of subtracting eight, we're gonna add eight. So we're gonna do 22 add eight, which is equal to 30. And then instead of multiplying by three, we'll divide by three. So we'll do 30 divide by three, and that's equal to 10. And that's it. So if the output is 22, the input is 10. And again, we can test it out. 10 times 3 is 30. Take away 8 is 22. Okay, now we've got a bit of algebra in this question. It says, find an expression for the output when the input is x. I actually like these questions because you don't actually need to work anything out. You just need to write down what the expressions are. So uh, we've got our input. Our input is x. So I'm going to put x here. It says then we're gonna multiply by three. Well, we're gonna times x by three. And in algebra, whenever you times a letter by a number, you just put them together, make sure the number goes at the front. So x times three is three x. And then it says we're gonna subtract eight. Well, if you wanna subtract eight from three x, well, it's just gonna be three x subtract eight. And that's it. So our expression for our output would be three x minus eight. Okay, our next example, example number four. In this example, we've got an input multiplied by three, subtract 14, and then we get our output. And the question says the input is the same as the output. In other words, the number that's here, whenever you work it all out, will give you the same answer here. Now, in these questions, there's two different ways to try these. You can use trial and improvement. So you can just sort of put in numbers, see how you get on, and then sort of, you know, hopefully you get the right one. Now sometimes in the questions in the GCSE papers they might work out that the answer is a nice sort of whole number or you know quite straightforward number um, or sometimes it might be a decimal number a bit tricky so that's where you might need to use a bit of algebra. I'm going to do this question first of all using trial and improvement and then what I'm going to do is do it using algebra and then I'll do another question afterwards where it's going to be a bit harder. Okay so um, the input is the same as the output so we could use trial and improvement we could do one and one multiplied by three is three, and take away 14, well that's gonna be minus 11. Well, as you can see, whenever you put in one, your output's minus 11, well that's not the same. So let's increase it, let's maybe go to something like five. 
5 multiplied by 3 is 15. Subtract 14 would be 1. Again, they're not the same. They're a bit closer, but they're not the same. Let's increase it a bit higher. Uh, 6. 6 multiplied by 3 is 18. Subtract 14 is 4. So we're getting closer. If I was to try 7, 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. Subtract 14 is 7. So as you can see, our input is the same as the output. So it says find the input. The input would be 7. And that's how you could do it using a sort of a trial improvement type approach. I'm not going to show you how to do this question using algebra um, because it can be quite useful, particularly if the answer is not you know, as nice as 7. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the input. And I'm going to call the input x, just like I did in the last question, actually. And I'm going to multiply it by 3. Well, x times 3 is 3x. And subtract 14 would be 3x take away 14. In other words, if my input is x, my output is 3x minus 14. Now, I know the input is the same as the output, so I know that this is the same as this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them equal to each other as an equation. Um, so I'm going to write 3x minus 14 equals, so the output is equal to the input. I could have written it the other way around as x equals 3x minus 14. It's the same thing. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this equation. I'm going to see what's the lowest number of x's. So if I've got 3x's and 1x, 1x is my lowest number of x's, so I'm going to minus x from both sides of the equation. If I minus x from both sides of the equation, I get 2x minus 14, and that equals 0, because x take away x is 0. I'm then going to add 14 to both sides of the equation, so add 14 and add 14, and that will give me 2x equals 14. And then I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2, and I'm going to get x equals 7. And that's it. Um, if you do need to watch the video on solving equations with letters on both sides and quarter miles, feel free to watch that if that was a bit tricky for you. Um, otherwise, um, just carry on watch the next example. Okay, and our last example. Our last example, here we've got input is equal to x. It says multiply by 5, subtract 11, and we've got our output to be 3x. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing here. Apart from this time, what it's saying is that the output is 3 times the input. In other words, if I was to put in something like 10, my output would be 30. Or if I was to put in 6, my output would be 18. And we've just got to find what value for my input would I get an output, which is 3 times larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing again, where I'm going to do x multiplied by 5, which is 5x, and then subtract 11, which is 5x minus 11. So if my input is equal to x, if my input is equal to x, by working through the function machine, I get an answer, an output of 5x minus 11. But in the question, it says that it's going to be 3 times a certain number, so it's equal to 3x as well. So in other words, this output is the same as this output. So we can just put them equal to each other. So you just write 5x minus 11 equals 3x. And then you just solve this equation. Um, so we're just going to take away the smallest number of x's. So that's going to be 3x and so minus 3x and minus 3x. And you get 2x minus 11 equals 0. We're going to add 11 to both sides. So add 11 and add 11 to get 2x equals 11. And then divide by 2 and divide by 2 and you get x equals 5.5. And let's just test it out. 5.5 uh, multiplied by 5, well that would be 27.5. And subtract 11 would be 16.5. And as you can see, if we have 5.5 as our input, our output is 16.5, which is three times larger. And that's it.